Hello and welcome to the Brooklyn Rails 271st New Social Environment. I'm Ty, a production assistant here at the Rail, and I have the pleasure and privilege of being your MC today for our 31st Radical Poetry Reading, curated by Mary Riley. Every Wednesday, a guest curator invites a number of poets who they admire to the new social environment to read political poetry. And we are so thrilled to have poets Tongo Eisen Martin, Ani Jika, Sai Hoai, Jack Jung, Lulieta Leishinaku here with us today. We here at the Brooklyn Rail start all of our events with two important acknowledgements. The first is that here in Brooklyn, we are located in Lenape Hoking, the unceded land and waters still belonging to the Wappinger, Canarsie, Muncie, and Lenny Lenape people of the Delaware Nation and Shinnecock Indian Nation. The second acknowledgement is that Black Lives Matter. We recognize the legacy of settler colonialism as a part of the many contemporary expressions of white supremacy. We honor those that have lost their lives to this violence. I encourage you all to check the chat in just a moment for a living document of resources and actions as we do our part in the learning and unlearning required to undo this legacy of injustice. Thank you. And now to introduce today's curator, a poet and translator living in New York. Mary Riley's work has appeared in the New York Quarterly, Bowery Women, and Sulaja Century. She is the recipient of fellowships from the Bison and Leclerc Foundations for her research on and translations of contemporary French poetry. A curator at Levi Gorby since 2018, Riley heads the gallery's poetry program, commissioning poems for the exhibition catalogs and running a reading and talk series. Mary, over to you. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, Ty. That was such a beautiful introduction. Um, I'm so very grateful to be here. I, I, um, I, I really want to thank the rail in its entirety uh, for this series, for the new social environment. It has been a kind of creative and cathartic lifeline uh, in this time of isolation. And I, I remember, I was just thinking about logging on back, I guess it was a year ago, March, or did you guys start in March last year? Or was it April? And like, and just, I, I felt so alone and so scared. And then I opened this, uh, the screen and, um, and there's art and there's discourse and it was so essential. So uh, thank you. I, I couldn't be more grateful or happier to be a part of this. Um, I also um, wanted to, I'm going to post some um, links to organizations um, uh, I'll name them, uh, CAAV, uh, Organizing Asian Communities, which builds grassroots community power across diverse, poor, and working in a class Asian immigrant and refugee communities in New York City to fight for institutional change and participate in the broader movement toward racial, uh, gender, and social economic justice, as well as a link to the Asian Mental Health Care Collective, which aspires to make mental health easily available, approachable, and accessible to Asian communities worldwide. And a third link for the uh, Apex for Youth, which delivers possibilities to underserved Asian and immigrant youth from low-income families in New York. Um, I know we all feel very desperate and sad um, about what's been happening in our communities, uh, the violence against Asian Americans and Asians. And I, um, I wanna do something. I also wanna thank poet Christine Shen, uh, Shen Shen Hu for recommending those nonprofits. Um, she's an incredible artist and poet. Um, I'll also post her name so you can um, look up her work. Um, and um, lastly, I wanna thank uh, Suzanne Goldenberg who hosts uh, the fantastic Crush Reading Series at the Woodbine Collective in Ridgewood. Um, I'm going to post a link to her event series and um, a link where you can donate to, to, to keep that space going. Uh, Suzanne is actually the person who invited uh, who introduced me to the work of our first reader, um, Tongo Eisen Martin. Uh, he read just a few weeks ago, Cy read as well um, on the series. And uh, it was actually one of the most beautiful poetry readings I've ever been to. And I go, I go to like three or four a week. So I mean, that's kind of saying something, three or four a week for 15 years. Um, so, so check out Woodbine, uh, it's, it's where it's happening. Um, okay, so uh, with that, I'm gonna introduce um, Tongo. Um, uh, origin uh, Tongo Eisen Martin. Originally from San Francisco, Tongo Eisen Martin is a poet, movement worker, and educated educator. His latest curriculum on extra the extrajudicial killing of Black people, we charge genocide again, has been used 
as an educational and organizing tool throughout the country. His latest book, Heaven is All Goodbyes, published by the City Lights Pocket Poet Series, was shortlisted for the Griffin Poetry Prize and won a California Book Award and an American Book Award. Um, with that, I, I give you a tango. I know. Um, cap capitalists, um, capitalists eat until the world is blurry to them. Uh, these streets are made of saliva. Uh, there are some people made of saliva too. They usually have on uniform. Uh, while a crazy uh, person spins round and round trying to make a record out of this mass production jungle, maybe out doing uh, count cash and cry. These streets are made of saliva and white sheets are worn by a building in which kids are supposed to learn how to read well. Uh, white sheets on the highway too. Another mirror needs their head on a pipe. One down is just one down, but you know, you, you tell all this to the masses, your teacher will pipeline you. They, they told me I was jewelry. Uh, they told me this is jungle. Uh, well, maybe not jungle, more like 50 machine guns planted in the ground. It, it's raining faces again in California. What does it say about heaven? Uh, what does it say about the people you kill? Waiting lines got so exhausted, a million minds dropped all these faces at once. If the fascists can read the lips of a giant talking in his sleep, we might as well make our demands in prison letters. Today was born the most important trigger finger in the world. Uh, today I began uh, counting down the pages between now and a pile of books by a tunnel. Chicago uh, is going to walk out of Chicago one day. Uh, babies would drag street signs like old toys. Today, the most important letter left prison. Babies will laugh at flags like faces that have disappeared, maybe out doing it. But for now, you know, these streets are made of saliva and we raised half full glasses to the basements that meant nothing. <laughs> and the working poor who lived there, we get shot. We get a white sheets on California where the kitchen table likes to talk as much as the walls and romance on the porch consists of hard residing. I mean, in this picture, characters talk spit and know that they're hard to kill. The kitchen table knows this. The porch is almost convinced that, you know, one down is just one down. This town, is coming to town. <laughs> a circus watching yourself. Half distracted, half suicidal, thrilled children dressed as cops, thrilled children preaching and policing and intaking and hiring and snatching your money. This town's coming to town with tough trademarks to follow. Today I watch capitalism walk on water <laughs> and people play dead so that they could be part of a miracle. I go to the railroad tracks and follow them to the station of my enemies. A cobalt tooth man pitches pennies at my mugshot negative all over the United States. There are toddlers in the rock. I see why everyone out here got in the big cosmic basket and why blood agreements mean a lot and why I get shot back at. I understand the psycho spiritual refusal to write white history or take the glass freeway. Uh, white skin tattooed on my right forearm. Ricochet sewage near where I collapsed into a rat infested manhood. My new existence is living graffiti in the kitchen with a lot of gun cylinders to hack up. House of God in part, no cops in part. My body brings down to Christmas. Uh, the new bullets pray over blankets made from the old bullets. Pray over the 28th hour's next beauty mark, extrajudicial Confederate statue restoration, the waistband before the next protest poster. Hey, by the way, time is not an illusion, your honor. I will save your desk for less. You are, you are witty, your honor. Uh, you're moving money again, your honor. It, it is only raining one thing. Uh, Non-white cops <laughs> and prison guard shadows reminded me of spoiled milk floating on an oil spill. A neighborhood making a lot of fuss over its demise in New Lake for a Black Panther party. Uh, Malcolm X's ballroom jacket slung over my son's shoulder. The figment of village and new news to a new white preacher, all in an abstract painting of a president. They bought slavery some time, didn't he? Uh, the tantric speeches of military boss in election Tuesday cars. A cold-blooded study in leg irons. Proof that some white people have actually found the nooses. And sundown couples made their vows of love over opaque peach plastic and bolt action audiences. The Medgar Ever Second is definitely my favorite law of science. Final news clippings and primitive Methodists, my arm changes imperialisms. Simple policing versus structural frenzies. Elementary school script versus even wider white spectrums. Artless bleeding in the challenge of watching civilians think of terrible rituals they have around the corner. They let their elders beg for public mercy. I'm gonna go ahead and sharpen these kids' heads in the arrows myself. And see how much gravy spills out of family crest, modern fans of war. What, what, with their t-shirt poems and t-shirt guilt? And me having on the cheapest pair of shoes on the bus, I have no choice but to read the city walls for signs of my life. I, I talk facing away from the dead. They replace me with the change in my pocket, a 
penny that's yet to be invented. They say you have to know how to cut a throat on the way to cutting a throat. After sleeping on a mattress made from two garbage bags of clothes, I became content with the small gestures of plantation fires. I mean, playing with couch ashes, I realized how weird the universe was. It exists in so many places, so many random things that interrupts me while I'm trying to dream. Like a clay correspondence lawyer. To be transparent, I have 20 books next to a bullet like an old man giving advice at the beginning of a revolution. I've really done it, Lord. Explored the muscles of my mind. It explored what's naturally there. And I found no brainwashing. I found Africa, Lord. I have a future. It takes place in the diaspora south. I have morning possessions. Modern militancy. I mean, windows to the south. I'll walk on a missile for food. I guess you will not want flowers for a few years, Lord. Will I be tied face to face with the country I murdered? Merge with us, Lord. An old metal versus new metal. Our old metal versus a pool of meandering imperialist faces and a multiculturalism of sorts. You know, the dead replaced me with a comedian's chest cavity instead of a chest cavity held tight. It takes a violent middle man for me to talk to myself. Stories that travel through other people's stories. A song about a song. A hemisphere about a hemisphere. You know, stories that travel through a concrete party. My mother remembers Africa, Lord. She killed on behalf of you, Lord. I, I wore a machete all winter and no one asked me what it meant. I read 1,000 books in front of the world. What I do is fight poems and sleep through decking in San Francisco prayer circles. Watch people play for post-working class associate services, the recreations of a governor's desk, ruling class art of utility plan, find a sociopathic bureaucrat. Today, some white people scare even easier. TV in the basket next to a ceramic baby, wearing ceramic armor, musket progeny, fantasizing through the art of the poor, their trendy latches locked before God, black art hunted down like a dog. They hand, hand over my friends, Lord. Lord, I think I'm gonna die in a war. Unelected white people in my small house, like a blue song with no spiritual effect, or, or a dollhouse H bomb, a pony show near dead bodies, apartheid weddings that go right, apartheid white people who give birth to mathematicians, the spiritual continuity of barracks and police stations, a chemical interpretation of a Sunday trip at church. Church smells in their pockets a river mistaken for a talking river. No autobiography outside of small personal victories of violence and drug use, made in the image of God treaters, with white abolitionists confided in their children about chemical assurances that they will switch. From black artist to white artist, from black guy to white guy, from black worker to white worker. You know, I think about you cautiously, Lord, in the same way I think about my childhood, Lord. Foxhole Friday nights, most of life is new. A comedian points out a planet's field to a priest, king, sugar cane, king, cotton king, revolutionary to Bible Central, containing all modes of shallow introduction, introducing an unlisted planet class, speaking about fevers and balance sheets and reassuring the masses that we can figure out our fathers later. A priest took my mother lightly, Lord. Stood in front of parishioners, re fantasies about black art, priest reading confidently before I broke him and broke his parallel. After the day, I've never been a poet before. Little brother watches his big brother's friend. And when he rifles on shelter walls, they agree with me and call it literature. You know, it's a simple matter, this revolution thing. To, to really lie to no one, to keep nothing godlike, to, to, to write a poem for God. You know, all street life, to a certain extent, starts with spirit, sometimes with a spiritual memory, even. A pre dawn soul clap, your father dying, even. Maybe I pushed the city too far. My sensitivities, the landfill district thing, and minstrel whistles, white supremacists, graffiti on westbound rail guards, all overcome and reauthored. I mean, reauthored by revolutionary violence that chose its own protagonist or muted stage of genius. I mean, the garbage is growing voices, condensed Marxism for warrior depressives, underpasses in their pockets because they just might be deities or decent bid on the panther name of merciful Marxism. Disquieted home life, a metaphor for relaxing next to a person who is relaxing next to a gun. I stared at my father for a few seconds, then returned to my upbringing. <laughs> Return to the souls of Ohio black folks, you know, uh, uh, revolution, damn near pagan at this point. Uh, or you know what this, the clown wants? Uh, the respect of the ant wants to interpret pain only, wants to pull a 38 out of a begging bowl, wants me to hurt my hand on this pen. I'm not tired of these rooms. It's tired of the world to give them a relativity. My only change of clothes prosecuted the government has finally learned how to write poems, shootouts that briefly align and make up a parable, parable like white bodies are paid well. <laughs> Now, uh, do white men even have leaders? Are all white people white men? A, a rat pictures a river. It can almost taste the racial divide. It can almost roll a family member's head into a city hall legislative chamber. Knows who in this good book will fly. All I do is practice, Lord. Decided not to talk out of anger ever again. Met my wife at the same time. I'm, 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 I met new audience members for our pain. I mean, we pass each other cigarettes and watch cops win. A city going uniquely linear. Harlem of the West, do a true universe. I'll always remember you in fancy clothes, my wife says. So here I sit, twisting in silk ideation. Rifle made of tar, targets made of an honest language. The San Francisco poetry is how God knows it is me whining. Riding among the lesser respected wolves, lesser observed militarization, Dixieless prison bookkeeping. I mean, the California great coasts are coming. Lynch mob gossip and bourgeois debt collection. I mean, it's tempted to change professors mid poem. In the Chicago briefing, a white sergeant saying, blank slate for all of us after this black or Organizer is dead. Standard academics toasting two buck wine at the tank parade. Man, pay of nothing, Lord. Just nuclear cobblestones, gun line athleticism, and the last of the inherited asthma. Children giving white dolls to play with in fear, facial expressions borrowed from rich people's shoestrings. I can hear hate. 
and teach hate and call tools by people names and name people dead to themselves. And no one get naturalized except fair lazy soon. Carving the equator in the throat. So I mean, I'm sorry to make you relive all this. Go to all this pre down monarchy friends putting up politician posters and snorting the remainder of the pace. Mitchell Scripps shoveling into the walls by their elders. My children sharpening their quarters on the city's edge. You know, for these audiences, I project myself into a ghost-like state. For these gangsters, I do the same every now and then. Take a nervous look. Eat, sleep becomes Christ. Sleep starts growing to racial identity. Do you ever spiral, Lord? Has the gang age betrayed us? Be patient with my poems, Lord. So much pain, it's a point of crime. I mean, it has to be a phrase traders come with it. Lord, is that my revolver in your hand? You know, better presidents than these have yawned at cages, have called us holy slaves, filled the school libraries with cop documentaries. Baby, I don't have money for food. Shit, I don't have a present moment at all. Thank y'all. Wow. Thank you so much, Tongo. Um, I, um, it's an impossible task to go after you. I have no idea how you do that. Um, uh, and it's such a gift. Um, um, thank you. Uh, but someone must. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have someone uh, brilliant and, and skillful to do so. Um, uh, Jack Young is a graduate of the Iowa Writers Workshop, where he was a Truman Capote Fellow. He was born in Seoul, South Korea, and immigrated to the United States, uh, where he received his BA in English from Harvard and an MA in Korean Language and Literature from Seoul National University. His translations of Korean poet Yi Sang's poetry and prose are published in Yi Sang, selected works by Wave Books. He is the American Literary Translation Association's 2021 Emerging Translator Mentorship Program Mentor for Korean Poetry. He currently teaches Korean poetry and translation at Literature Translation Institute of Korea. Uh, and now I'm going to just briefly read about Yi Sang, who, uh, whose work um, Jack so so brilliantly translated, beautifully translated. Um, formerly audacious and remarkably compelling, Yi Sang's works were uniquely situated amid the liter literary experiments of world literature in early 20th century and the political upheaval of 1930s Japanese occupied Korea. As Joyelle McSweeney has remarked, his poetry seemed to deny the prerogatives of the mundane world while being saturated with the alienation and horror of the occupation. End quote. Today, Yi Sang's work endures as one of the great revolutionary legacies of modern Korean literature. And with that, uh, I give you Jack. Hi, Mary. Thank you for that beautiful introduction. And Tongo, that was an incredible performance and poetry. I am honored to go right after you and a little scared. <laughs> uh, I hope uh, Yi Sang's poetry um, will be able to echo some of the wonderful, tragic things that we were just able to have the honor to listen to. Um, I guess for Yi Sang, just to do some more additional introduction uh, for those of you that not know him, he is uh, considered as uh, someone who was the first person to introduce surrealist and Dadaist uh, style of writing to Korean literature. Um, very experimental and also, as uh, Mary just said in her introduction, uh, formerly audacious. I think another thing that perhaps on a more personal note, we want to keep in mind is that this was a young man in his 20s who was dying from tuberculosis, who had uh, given up his job as an architect to become a fully poet and also um, living as a second-class citizen within an empire that had subjugated his people, that was forcing uh, Japanese onto Korean people as a spoken language. And so him just writing in Korean was very much of a political gesture. And another thing is that um, many of his poems uh, often return to these motifs. Um, and today I'll read uh, some of those motifs um, related poems uh, that speak of flowers and mirrors. Um, so in that spirit, I'll read the first poem in Korean and in English, and the others just in English to, uh, in consideration of the time. 꽃나무 벌판 한복판에 꽃나무 하나가 있어 
근처에는 꽃나무가 하나도 없소. 꽃나무는 제가 생각하는 꽃나무를 열심으로 생각하는 것처럼 열심으로 꽃을 피워가지고 섰소. 꽃나무는 제가 생각하는 꽃나무에게 갈수 없소. 나는 막 달아났소. 한 꽃나무를 위하여 그러는 것처럼 나는 참 그런 이상스러운 흉내를 내었소. Flowering tree. On an open field, a flowering tree stands, with no other like it nearby. The flowering tree blossoms with a burning heart, as if thinking of another flowering tree, burns its heart. The flowering tree cannot reach the tree flowering in its thoughts. I wildly fled for the sake of one flowering tree. I truly did such weird mimicry. Mirror. Inside the mirror is soundless. Perhaps no other world is so silent. Inside the mirror, I still have ears. Two pitiful ears cannot understand my words. Inside the mirror, I'm a lefty who knows not how to take my handshake, a lefty who knows no handshakes. Because of the mirror, I cannot touch the me inside the mirror. Because of the mirror, I get to meet the me inside the mirror. I do not have the mirror now, but the me inside the mirror is in it. I do not know, but he's probably obsessed with his lefty work. The me inside the mirror is the opposite of me and yet looks quite like me. I am disappointed. I cannot agonize on and examine the me inside the mirror. Crow's Eye View, poem number 15. One, I'm in, I'm in a room with no mirror. Of course, the me inside the mirror has gone out right now. I shudder in fear of him. Where did he go? What is he plotting to do with me? Two, I sleep on a cold bed, damp from embracing my crime. I am absent in my explicit dream and the military boot carrying a prosthetic leg dirtied my dream's white page. Three, I sneak into a room with mirror to free myself from the mirror. But the me inside the mirror always enters at the same time and puts on a gloomy face. He lets me know he's sorry. Just as I am locked up because of him, he's locked up shuddering because of me. Four, I am absent in my dream. In my mirror, my counterfeit does not make an entrance he craves my loneliness despite my uselessness. I have finally made up my mind to recommend suicide to him. I point him toward the viewless window. It is a window for suicide. But he instructs me that if I do not kill myself, then he cannot kill himself either. The me inside the mirror is almost a phoenix. Five. After covering my breast above my heart with a bulletproof shield, I aim and shoot at my left breast in the mirror. The bullet goes straight through his left breast, but his heart is on the right side. Six, a red ink is spilled from an imitation heart. In my dream, I am late, I am sentenced to death. I am not the ruler of my dream. It is a great crime to seal up two humans who cannot even shake hands. And for the last of the Yisang poems, I'll read the Korean again and the English translation. 절벽 꽃이 보이지 않는다. 꽃이 향기롭다. 향기가 만개한다. 나는 거기 묘혈을 판다. 묘혈도 보이지 않는다. 보이지 않는 묘혈 속에 나는 들어 앉는다. 나는 눕는다. 
아직도 꽃이 향기롭다. 꽃은 보이지 않는다. 향기가 만개한다. 나는 잊어버리고 재차 거기 묘혈을 판다. 묘혈은 보이지 않는다. 보이지 않는 묘혈로 나는 꽃을 깜빡 잃어버리고 돌아간다. 나는 정말 눕는다. 아, 꽃이 또 향기롭다. 보이지도 않는 꽃이. 보이지도 않는 꽃이. Cliff. I cannot see the flower. The flower is fragrant. The fragrance is in full bloom. I dig a grave in it, but I cannot see the grave either. I enter the grave. I cannot see and sit there. I lie down. I can smell the flower again. I still cannot see the flower. The fragrance is in full bloom. I forget about it and dig a grave. I still cannot see the grave. I forget about the flower and go into the grave I cannot see. Ah, I can smell the flower again. This flower I cannot see. This flower I cannot see. Um, so those, that was a sampling of some Yisang's poetry. And um, Mary was kind enough to invite me to read some of my poems. So I'll uh, follow that up. I, I feel like I'm just, after Tongo and after Yisang, now I have to read my own poems. So I'll just uh, try my best here. <laughs> Um, so uh, some these poems, just to give them a quick introduction, I was desperately trying to change my style uh, during a bit of a difficult phase in my life. And the uh, first one is my closest call with a bit of a nonsense, but I think I wanted to break any rule that I thought I ever had about my own poetry writing, any kind of inhibition and just let loose. Um, so. I hope you'll enjoy it just for the way it reads, hopefully. Um, hammer. Feeling extra technical, almost lyrical, almost an extraterrestrial, terraforming fanatical. Caltech engineers cannot calculate tactically weaponized nuking of my rate. When it's so freaking fast, I've already passed. What predetermined fate cannot emancipate? all according to the procedure similar to illegal contrabanding of brands and pedicures, and the ecumenical dogma of an animated corpse anticipated in the walk-up to the final boss is the territorial nature of a brood mother in her cage. So this sentiment sanctifies, don't wait, all the ecclesiastical particulars of proclamations barked out and sentimentalizes, Ozymandias is onus. Each piece, a collateral collective bargaining memorandum of acts thrown off verandas, the ghost of post-it notes, my Miranda. Ward orge, scoured of pathology, a thousand time fold of a bad iron can't fix. Uh, next poem is titled Whiplash and it was came after uh, somewhat of a uh, traumatic encounter with my grandmother um, who, when I returned to Korea after many years away, after I had immigrated to the United States, one of the first things she said to me was that I should keep my eyes wide open because that's what girls like now. And then <laughs> I had to live with that for many years. And uh, one day it came back to me and I ended up writing a poem about it. <laughs> Whiplash. Snap back, take the trash out of my place. Last bags filled with unspent dirty cash. This lush land fit for scattering ash. Does bone mix with shit and make soil rich, oil or coal for generational prosperity? Oh, my doddering granny hasn't called in ages. The illiterate one who has no will to leave. She never once cooked what I wanted. She kept making veggies dunked in ketchup, spicy looking before they got in my mouth. Last we talked, she wanted me to open my eyes wide because that is what girls like now. You know your defeat when Nana wants you, a white stranger outboard in the city. Have you tipped any cows grazing at night? You get extra service for half a wage. Look at their big round eyes welling up, ready to cry at any given touch. 
crystal balls fit to receive oracles, sorrow ruminating gurgled up grass. On any given Sunday, I am milking their tits. Grandmother, my one and only babysitter, my divination never tells me who is dead. Lazarus. I died in my room and they turned it into a tomb built to look like where I slept since little. Time is now so thunder with me, get loud and prepare to receive these electric vibrations, earthen dome, stony carved out cave, not a final resting place. My smoke machine is at a friend's party. I'd love to come out and be messianic, like a twig on the Galilee Sea, performing water walking more godlike seemingly than the resurrection, which none saw. I do care about lepers deserving paradise on their island. How do you beg your soul to ask yourself to not kill you? Did I ask to be raised? I don't even know what my relationship to the guy was. He didn't say. Somewhere between verse and chapter, mother nursed me back. And this final poem um, is kind of like a amalgamation of swearing as a US citizen and worries and anxieties about climate change all coming together. <laughs> Gone Boy. Valorize all forms of trash. It's this itch yet to be fully scratched. Oh no, it's not a rash. Not infectious. I'm vaccinated as all immigrants are. Migratory birds, however, who knows? Far from being fresh off the boat, this accent won't get accentuated with tenuous symbols of an organized system as an intro to the cosmic citizenry one enters by swearing off any allegiances to foreign princes and potentates, still asking for mail-in rebates for taxes unpaid. Position for transference into a positronic brain containing composites of what you saw and saw off the best parts from your dug up loot from the cloak and dagger graveyard shift after, the, after this flu epidemic has passed the city. Death has undone the numbers and put them together however you see fit. The world has already passed the vortex. Auroras are up of up the jungle's liftless canopy. Tomorrow is another day of one more day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're kidding me. It was wonderful. That was wonderful. I am so grateful that you read your work. Um, yeah, I mean, that was, that was wonderful. I'm, you know, like, I just, I, again, I just, I just can't believe that I get to do this. Like really what I'm doing is just like getting to email these poets that I admire, um, that, that I want to hear, that maybe live somewhere else uh, and, and I don't get to. And, and, and then they come here and read to us this beautiful work. Like it's just, it's such a gift. Uh, thank you so much, Jack. Um, and uh, I, I didn't, I never pasted Suzanne and the Woodbine. So I'm just going to do that now. Again, this is just like a wonderful reading series. If you, if you like poetry, um, it's, it's for you. Um, and um, our next, our next poet is another, I mean, and that's the other special thing is like, I, I didn't actually know, um, the only poet that I knew going into this is, is actually the poet he's going to read next, which is Sa. Hi. Um, and I, I met Sai because I, I read his work in, in actually Poetry Magazine and was very moved by it. And I, as was mentioned in my bio, I, 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 I work for a gallery who we commission original work um, that kind of aligns either aesthetically or emotionally with um, the art we're exhibiting. And so um, when we, uh, when this show came up, I, I kind of, which was Soulage, I had uh, Sai's work in mind and I was able to reach out to him. And, uh, and then that, now we're friends, you know, that was two years ago and we've just like um, had this kind of sweet, nice correspondence over the years. And it's like, you know, like what a gift. And he's in Arkansas, which I feel like is like extraordinarily exotic. You know, we have, uh, you know, I mean, like we have people from all over the world, but Arkansas, I feel like you are, 
you are you are unique, uh, Sai, in that. So um, with that, I'm going to read his um, his biography. Um, of Comanche Southern Arapaho descent, Saihoa received his MFA in creative writing from the University of Arkansas. He has published two collections of his work, Night Crate, oh, three collections, sorry, I, this is the old bio. Night, well, I'll give you the, the former two first and then I'll go back and give you the latest, Night Cradle um, and Velroy and the Medici Mafia. In 2013, he was the recipient of the National Endowment for the Arts Literature Fellowship, and he actually has a new book out from New Mexico Press. Um, and I'm gonna, I don't have, the title isn't sticking in my mind. I, I'm waiting for my coffee very excitedly. So I'm gonna ask Sai if you would um, just promote your book for a okay. second. And, <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> and we'll put a link in the bio too. Ancestral <laughs> Demon of a Grieving Bride. It was published, came out this February from University of New Mexico Press. So, oh, are we ready? Ready to, okay. Um, I'm uh, my name is Sai Ho Hawaii. I'm a member, enrolled member of the Comanche Nation of Oklahoma and of Southern Arapaho people, the Cheyenne Arapahoes of Oklahoma as well. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to, I guess, start reading from Ancestral Demon of a Grieving Bride. Um, I was really hesitant before someone asked, well, where are you coming, you know, where are you, uh, where are you at? And I'm, I was very hesitant to say Arkansas because, uh, of the past, um, uh, uh, past couple months with everything that went on in DC and all that. And so, yeah, it, I am in the hinterlands. And so, but, um, well, let me start off, uh, with this poem. Before we're eaten, the raccoon witch cannibal monk sings to us, showing rolls upon rolls of teeth. And the songs are always about the Arapaho girl whose parents' names are white crazy and grief. And how she offers up her last finger as a sacrifice. And then the cannibal monk takes a bow, wearing his own gigantic scrotum as a robe. At the center of the center of the center of things, he keeps us. His stomach is a small bedroom with an old mattress and wooden floor lined with old newspapers and coffee cans full of kerosene for the scorpions that come out to mock. Uh, this next poem I'm going to read, it's entitled When Snake Was Dove's Brother-in-Law. And the title, it's taken from an old uh, part of uh, Comanche oral tradition, one of our stories. It's um, So the title holds not only a cultural, um, oral storytelling reference, but it's also a reference in time, in a time back in our culture when um, everything was connected in the physical world. Everything had a connection to everything else. And a lot of the stories pertaining to animals, you had marriages between unlikely animals like a snake and a dove. So, when Snake was Dove's brother-in-law, midnight whistled across the lake. I drank scotch and survived on pine needles. For a headache, I dug a trench long enough for a body. The lake turned over like a heartbroken spouse. An albino largemouth bass surfaced all its fins and ancient hooks pointed toward heaven. And the fish's constant smile moved like a serpent underneath the water. When Snake was Dove's brother-in-law, the reservoir cut across the narrow neck of my dream. 
with yellow armpits, a coyote was motioning bad news, tapping on the water, on the lake water with the last of his tools. I floated out over a flooded township long forgotten. I wore the lake like a cloak. Stars swam in and out of my hands. I floated out over the sunken high school football field. I floated out over the funeral home, like the effects of the moon on the bologna sandwiches of morticians when Snake was Dove's brother-in-law. Uh, this next poem I'm gonna read, uh, it's entitled Jagged Winter Trail Designs. The wagon and mule, time and eternity, stop to change places. Their lean slope back shadow, my reservation. The moon moves like infested flower. At the river, bloody victories meet bloody massacres. And they tell each other about their dead. Grandmothers eat buffalo instead of hamburger. And at supper, guitar chords bite through gravestone. Then the one grandfather interrupts, walking off with his own skull as a lantern into the polar night. A snowshoe hair cleans the ears of the sleeping and leaves prophetic dreams. It is quiet. One can hear the hair of the dead grow. The woods itself are dressed in frozen children's clothes. When the few of the living disguise themselves as pond beadwork. Uh, let's see. Uh, next one I'm gonna read, it's entitled Taponi. This is the deepest part of the world. Birds don't fly here, but there is the sound of wings and the smell, just a struggle in the earth underneath the musty floorboards. Monsters hatch fully grown from their eggs. Snaky legs indicate chaos. And I carry sad omens slobbered down the psychic's leg to her feet pointed backwards. Roll off the back of a skull strapped on top of the fox who shape shifts into the irresistible. And there's a Christian, Oklahoma shaped and melancholic, caught at the entrance of a ditch as the best breath of me tornadoes into the next county. Uh, this last poem I'm gonna read uh, lost my place. Um, it's from a previous collection, Villeroy, and it's the Madichai Mafia. Uh, Madichai is a it's a uh, little community in southwestern Oklahoma, uh, close to. Uh, well, I have family that live there, and um, it's close to the Comanche Nation headquarters. And it's named after an elderly woman that lived to be like a hundred and ten. Uh, she was actually a, a family member of my grandparents. But uh, this next poem I'm gonna read, it's entitled Colors of the Comanche Nation Flag. Red, Muppet's breath in moonlight outside a child's bedroom window. Hunter's bones scattered on the prairie. Fragrance of Comanche gangsters who entered the zoo club and assassinated the bosses of the Underworld Seven, a Navajo crime syndicate. Little Stony Burgess's footprints after catching gold, ghost sickness by running through Post Oak Cemetery, chased by the snot nosed bully, Blender Plenty Bear. Blue. Lips of the poisoned tribal chairman collapsed at the buffet table at the 1974 Comanche Nation inaugural dinner. 
silk handkerchief drawn over the stuffed owl used to converse with the dead. In the woods, it's the laughter of deer woman as she stomps her male victim to death. It's the electric guitar distortion of the Messiah playing Jimi Hendrix machine gun as she strolls into the Indian bar. Yellow. Cody's eyes in the darkness of the back seat at midnight as you speed down Mount Scott on a dare with the headlights off. It's crushed buffalo kidney stones used in graffiti to magically imprison the river witch underneath the I-44 bridge. It's the intricate beadwork of, Luc of Lucifer's cane left at the funnel cake stand at Comanche Fair. It's the flashing ignition light to the engines of the great abyss. Thank you. Thank you, Sai. That was wonderful. That was wonderful. Um, uh, and 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 you'll see that there are links. Ty is so hopefully posted to 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 all of the readers' books. Um, get them. I've 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 read Sai's first two books, and they're they're wonderful. Um, okay. Uh, and next we have um, Annie Jika and Lujita. Sorry, I, I keep, I'm the worst. Um, Lita Leshinaku? Yes. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, who, despite my inability to pronounce um, Luli's name properly, I'm, I'm a very big fan of her work, um, which is an easy thing to be, in fact, because it is, uh, it's, it's wonderful. Um, so uh, Luli and Annie are going to, so, Annie is a brilliant poet in her own right, as well as Luli's translator. So I believe what they're going to do is um, Luli's going to start by reading her poem. Uh, they're going to alternate reading the poem in Albanian and Luli's poems in Albanian and English. And then Annie's going to give us a reading of her, uh, her original poetry. Um, so I'm going to read, I'm going to read both their bios now. Um, and then, and then let them, let them amaze you. Um, uh, Lujeta Leshinaku. Uh, is an Albanian poet who studied uh, Albanian philology and literature at the University of Tirana and later graduated with an MFA from Warren Wilson College. She attended the International Writing Program, University of Iowa in 1999 and was awarded a Writer's Fellowship from the Black Mountain Institute at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. She has worked as a journalist, uh, TV author, university lecturer, and currently as a historical researcher. She is the author of nine poetry collections in her language and 14 other collections published in translation in other languages. Her latest poetry collection, Negative Space, was a winner of the English Pen Award, shortlisted for the Griffin International Poetry Prize uh, 2019 in Canada, and a finalist for Pen America 2019. Um, and Ani, uh, an Albanian board, born writer, author and translator of eight books and chapbooks of poetry, including Bread on Running Waters from Fenway Press. Um, her translation from the Albania of uh, Lueta Leshinaku's Negative Space from New Directions won an English Pen Award and was shortlisted for the International Broach Griffin Poetry Prize and Pen America's Poetry and Translation Award. Jika teaches writing at Framingham State University and is a graduate of Grub Street's Memoir Incubator Program where she was a 2019 Pauline Shree she she Sheer fellow. Uh, so with that, uh, I give you the poets. So uh, uh, it's it's real exciting to be in Brooklyn, even virtually. Uh, I uh, I we decided together to read five uh, to the, to read three poems, but uh, I'll read uh, two poems in Albanian, and Annie will read three poems in English. Uh, I would prefer Annie to start with the first uh, poem, which is the uh, Children of the Moral. Annie? Okay. Um, all right, and I, I just want to say as well that I'm really grateful to be here and honored to read with everyone um, and moved. And um, I did want to say also thank you for 
rail, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Brooklyn Rail for accepting like my first translation in Albanian, which was the work of another good Albanian writer, Ardian Bebiu. Um, so I'm grateful for your feature of in translation that you um, have in your in your journal. And um, yeah, and I also love this medium. And uh, I was reminded of an Irish um, proverb that says, um, people live inside the shelters that they create for each other. So um, thank you for creating that through this. Um, and it's an honor to read my translations of Lida, whose work I deeply admire. So here's Children's of Morality. It was the Europeans who taught indigenous people shame, beginning with the covering up of intimate parts. Other civilizations were luckier. Morality was handed to them, ready-made from above, inscribed on stone tablets. Where I grew up, morality had a form, body and name. Cain, unremorseful Mary Magdalene, Ruth, Delilah, and Rachel. Morality was easily pointed at by a seven-year-old's ink-stained finger. Perfect examples of vice or virtue, where time lays its eggs on a swamp. And, as I, and so I received the first lessons in morality without chewing them like cough syrup. Other things happened more abstractly and under a chaste roof. And strangely, even the second generation didn't disappoint. Their descendants became another Cain, another Ruth, another Mary Magdalene who never grew up. Cliches were simultaneously risky and protective for them, like trying to use dry snow to make an igloo. Now I know so much more about morality. In fact, I actually could be a moralist, pointing my index finger out as a rhetorical gesture, but without referring to anyone. Where did anyone, go, everyone go? A door opened by accident. Light broke through by force. And as in a dark room, erased their silver bromide portraits, which were once flesh and bone. Nieta Moralit. Ish never piano to far a chem so on in the gem the tulpin, doke filor and mulin, if yes, vain time. Hope with a tear can chain mamma fat. Moralio card or regards from the lart, is cruel and placa gory. A tiacunyam rit or moralic is the form, took the emmer. Nyo Cain, ni Maria Magdalene, papendor, nyo Ruth, Dalila Rachel. Morali tregoi let sish negish me boy nishtad biachari. Shame with procure vesi e virtuti, a ti ku koe le shan vesen bi mochal. Shto pra, si me te parat morali te mora pa i por tupo, si shuru por kol. Zdo gjo tjetër ish ma abstrakte, e një qatit por kor. Dhe qo ti trish ata së të gërnje, shgënje në asë në brezdin e dyt. Pasar si të tyre, ish një kain, një tjetër roth, një tjetër Maria Magdalene, që nuk rritëshin. Kleshea ishe një kosisht rëziko në mbrojtja për ta, si dëbore e thad, riglot, eskimeze. Tani e tani di shumë të epër për moralin, ma di mund t'jem një moraliste me gishin të regu si pjesë të retorikës, për pa referencë, që bëmë e ta. Një deru hapë pa dashe, ndrita qau me forcë. Dhe si në një laborator filmi, ajo shkërmoqi portretet e tyre me bromi dhe argjendi, që dikur më të kënë qenë prej mishe dhe kockët. Um, should I should I go should I read the English small town stations? Yes. And, okay. Um, so this one is titled Small Town Stations. Trains approach them like ghosts, the way a husband returning after midnight slips under the covers, keeping his cold feet at a distance. A post office, a ticket booth, the slow clock hanging from a nail. Some of the passengers have been sitting in the same chairs for a while now. They know that you must wait for the moment and that the moment will not wait for you. Only a few get on. 
fewer get off. The man sitting on a bench kills time reading a local newspaper. Train platforms are all the same, except for the boy hiding behind the pole, the color of his school uniform askew. He is not the firstborn, but the bro prodigal son, the chosen one for adventure and the parable of return. Fried dough, candy, mint sodas. It's the wandering vendor who stirs the thick air with his clumsy voice. His pockets are empty but deep. Dust clings freely on his sticky fingers along with a strand of hair. And in the evening, sometimes an entire city. You don't forget small town stations easily. The short stops with ordinary charm. If you pay attention to every detail, they will become our alibi for not arriving on time or for never arriving at all, wherever we had set out to go. Station e vejer, trenata flon rytyle si fantasma, se qfutet në shtroje bure që këtë mesnat, duke mbajtu larkam të ti të ftota. Posta, kioska e biletarisë dhe ora e mbetur prapan peran, pas agjeret e pak të aty në pritje për jorësh, sepse e din që jetë ti që duhet presësh për momentin dhe nuk është momentin që presë për ty. Të pak të ata që në gjitha, më të pak të ata që zbresi. Burri ullu në një stonë në platformë, zbatë kohë, mi një gazetë lokalet hapë në mesë. Ndalesat e trenit janë një rutinë, përbesh se për djalin e fshirë pas shkullësh, në jakë në uniformës shkollore të shkuar shtrembë, A ju nuk është i parë linduri, për djali plankë prishës, i parë atsaktuar, i parë aventurë dhe parë rabullë në rikëfinit. Petula, shikjerë ka rëndqata me mente, djali që u shetë pasa gjerëme nga dritaret, mi një dorë me paratë dhe tjetërën zjatë madhë. është pigmenti e erët që ruan nga ndrojtja. Gjepa të ti janë zbrazët për telë, pas gishave të ti me saharos, në gjithet letë plurë, në fje floku, dhe në mbrëm i vonë nga një herë një qytetë të tërë. Nuk haron letë stacionet e vejgjët, nda lesat e shkurtra me gjepat më dhejtë. Duk e fiksua e shdo detaj, ata du tjenë alibje jonë për mos mëritje në kohë, ose për mos mëritje në kurë, atje për ku ishë më njësë. And I will read the end of summer. The summer is coming to an end. I don't mean the emptied swimming pools, nor the wind digging in the sand for carcasses like a coyote pup. I'm referring to another summer and other signs. The moment you feel your star cooling off and so you pull it out of your chest and stitch it on your jacket like a badge or on a collar of your coat so that others may finally notice it. The moment you learn how to negotiate five desserts for a single cigarette five years of life for a failed romance, five butterfly lives for five caterpillar days in a cocoon, you understand that bitterness is the key to existence. And when you notice the landscape of your mother's face and your father's gestures are repeated perfectly in you without a single alternative, like a city settling into routine, after, she, after the decorations from a euphoric celebration are taken down. What happened to that which once made us unique? Unknown hands slip promotional pamphlets under the door with offers of end of season clothes, summer's stock. And under the pillow at night, other hands secretly slip incentives priced at 50% off that half of our pride will continue to turn down for a little while longer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so I am, um, I feel so like a fraud being here because I, I've not been writing poetry for a while. I've been writing mostly prose. Um, and so I will read a few poems from my book, Bread on Running Waters. Um, just two, because one is a little bit longish. So I will start with this poem called Immigrant. Um, 
because I thought immigrants have to navigate and negotiate so many different things. And um, at the same time, I felt that as an immigrant, or when I think of immigrants, I, I remember myself when I was 18 arriving here and um, maybe I was naive, but also I hope I was a little bit um, unafraid of crossing into another country and kind of making music and poetry and art uh, of all the obstacles. <laughs> so immigrant. At 18, I find myself in an airplane, weeping for hours, holding mother's hand. We land in Boston, July 4, 1996. It has just stopped raining. An officer asks to take our fingerprints. My brother and my parents don't speak English, but they're through customs first. When my turn comes, I tell the officer my hands sweat. He tries to print me anyway, but it won't do. Holds my finger tight so it won't slip. Wipes it with a cotton cloth. Put your finger here, he says. Look over there. Over there stands my family, waiting, as if to see me off. He tries once more. Put it down here. Look over there. Doesn't he know this has nothing to do with fear? There, just like getting a shot. It's already over. I check in and walk towards the crowd, thinking music. Put it down here, look over there. Ta 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 ta. Um, and the last poem is titled Voice. Um, and this is a little special for me. It's the last poem in the book, and, and I think it's also a poem from which my next work, which is a memoir, has kind of issued out of. So I'm happy to read it. And uh, just, I think sometimes. For some people, it takes longer for their voice, for them to speak, and, and that's okay too. Uh, voice. One. The one bedroom apartment slept three people in the living room and my parents in the bedroom. They let me glue posters of my latest crush on their bedroom walls. Axel Rose, James Dean, Johnny Depp, Cindy Crawford. I used to fall asleep on their bed looking at long faces I'd make out in the rings of the old oak closet. Long horse faces, long cow faces, a man in a top hat when sunlight fell on the cow. When my brother and I shared the living room, sometimes our grandmother startled us in the dark, getting up to say more prayers. She lived in the kitchen side of the living room with her dead daughter's never used catheter bags kept in a small wooden suitcase under her bed. My grandmother and her Bible and her Jesus painting, her black stockings, her colorful aprons and her bridal lace gloves tucked between sheets in an old dresser. My parents built a kitchen in the balcony and in the bathroom, my mother boiled our clothes over a small kerosene stove. As a child, I remember dreaming one night my whole family on a black sailboat in the middle of our living room, trying to hang on to the rails, trying not to think of sinking in the rolling black ocean below. Two, why come back here? The house is no longer mine. Grandparents are long gone. I don't recognize the neighbors. Apparently I have an accent here too. The city's face has changed. I cannot tell when it began. Buildings and cars strewn about as if a naughty child had taken all his toys and thrown them in a fit on the floor. Three, on the cross section figure of a tree trunk, you can make out her first year of growth. If the space between tree rings is wide, it indicates a rainy season. If it's narrow, the season was dry. You can even tell when she was scarred from forest fire and how she kept growing. And there's an old wound that began to change her face. Four. Once a young woman ran to curse the ocean. She was aware of her own weight against the sand and her fists tearing the air. She cried, damn you and your rolling waves, always having something to say but the water put his hand over her mouth and the waves said, 
The time will come when you too will speak unrestrainedly like a church bell. You will say everything you want to say. It will mean exactly what you want it to mean. And everyone will listen. Everyone knows you are here. And when the time comes for you to be quiet again, you will be quiet like the jasmine garden in the evening. And that is all right. You have a mouth. Thank you so much. I mean, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. Both readings were wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so I'm so thrilled to have you have you both here. Um, I'm going to read a poem. Uh, usually, the I guess the curators are invited to read a poem. I'm kind of like uh, Anna. You, you know, I'm I, I hesitate to follow you to be honest with you. So um, I'm going to do it. Uh, I'm going to do it. Um, okay. So I'm I'm yeah okay. So I'm going to read um, two 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 quick poems. Uh, one actually is about the the events that Sai the unfortunate events that Sai mentioned earlier. Um, and just the, the mess that we're in, I suppose. And um, the second is an a, attempt at um, kind of eco-poetics. So uh, that's that. Um, okay. That everyone should seem at ease, take comfort in, might feel the least discomfited by these precious lyric things. Poets being clever, being cute, hip in hats, living elsewhere, Vermont, Paris, places to be pure and when the world is just too much and all there is, poetry, a neatening. In England's middle ages, when everyone was an idiot and a slob and dying, to reconcile life with God, the poetry was really weird, brushing broadly. Darkness, frailty, and Grendels and green men. Monsters mourning, babies dead, demons adroit, outside is in at tricking fair hero and audience to sin. Meantime, nowadays, an article in the paper of record written in the style of Sam Shepard told of poor whites in some raw place, colorful people, but full of hate who spend welfare checks on flags and guns and blame their lives on blacks and Clintons, the downwardly mobile among us, unskilled, useless, hopeless, toothless, boogeymen of my liberal white dreams, of course they fuck us. And the next one is uh, Garden at Night. Okay, Garden at Night. The lakes all lightly lapping halts and the last geese who never in winter, who should never in winter have stopped here anyway, flap away in V's. Bad omen the people ignore, too busy on their phones. And yet they do come down to skate. So proving once for all, we still own skates like weather flush in cold air at the edge they josh, sighing, all of them secretly. It's come again, see, winter. Winter when they said it wouldn't. And after winter, certainly spring. Sky from water land, our earth wild again. Vines, fruit, failure. Little coats made of skin protect us. Weeping God, final exit. To desert wind, rock, behemoths, Swarms, hard labor, ourselves. Had we remembered it would all end, what might we have said instead? The sun shines for you, he said when the sun was shining. To utter such nonsense in daylight, what a fool. Forbidding one thing, he promised another. Knowing full well we would fail, he gave us everything, twice. Nighttime now, all he left us now ash. A shock of corn cometh in in a drought, hacked apart for kindling. Alive again, what might he say out of the whirlwind? Something useless, surely. Whew. So that's it. 
Thank you all so much for coming. What a gift. Holy moly. Um, yeah. Thank you, Ty. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Fong. Thank you, Luli. Thank you, Ani. Thank you, Sai. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Tongo. All my friends and all of the friends of the rail who came, you were wonderful. You're such great audience members, my God. Um, thanks for coming. Thank you so much, Mary. That was a really lovely reading. Um, so thank you, Tongo and Jack and Sai and Ani and Lulietta. And of course, again, thank you, Mary, for reading and for bringing everyone together today. And thank you to all of you who came out in the audience and in the chat. Uh, a reminder that The Rail is celebrating its 20th anniversary as a nonprofit dedicated to providing free and accessible criticism and community events. If you enjoyed today's event, please consider making a donation to keeping the rail and our special projects free, relevant, and independent. Please join us tomorrow for a conversation on solidarity, knowledge building, and critical love led by Dr. Elizabeth Bishop. We'll conclude tomorrow with a poetry reading by Adam Faulkner, and that will be at 1230 right here in the Zoom. And now is a great time for everyone to turn on their mics and say hello and goodbye and just remark on what a lovely reading we had today. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mary. Thanks, Lily. Yeah. Thanks, Thank Ani. Thanks, Jack. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Thanks, Sai. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow. Really good. That was Thank beautiful. You so much. I enjoyed it. Thanks a lot, Mary.